Hey guys, Sunday Slot Cars here. Today I'm going to show you how to wire up a variable power supply. All right, so here's the tools of the tree that we're going to need to hook up the variable power supply. First, the supply itself. This is a 30 volt, 10 amp supply. We're going slightly over what we need to reduce fan noise. If we went with something, a smaller voltage supply, and you start racing 124s, you might find that the fan on the power supply will get super loud. By getting a more powerful supply, we mitigate that. We need your power brick, of course, because we need its connector. You can look for some inline fuses at a store or something. I hate to say Amazon, but you can get them off of Amazon. We need a nice pair of wire strippers. I'm not saying it to go super expensive, but you definitely want something with an adjustable, uh, adjustable marker. Now here's the flux. Now you're going to want to have a thicker gauge flux than this. This is a little bit too thin for what we need. I wouldn't worry about going too thick. I mean, don't go overboard, but uh, we need the, this is called flux. We need flux for soldering. And lastly, the soldering iron itself. Now, if you're running analog, you're not going to need a soldering iron or the inline fuse. This is a 60 watt, uh, 60 watt iron, but you could definitely go hotter than that. Like I'd actually recommend going hotter than that. The hotter you can get, the better. It's so like the more watts is what I would get. Oh, and I should mention, you're looking for a 70-30 mix from the solder. Now this says lead-free solder. And the reason for that is Sunday slot cars does not condone illegal activities. It's, I don't know, I don't think it's legal to buy leaded solder in Canada anymore. At least it's legal to sell it. But don't worry, I'll show you how you would do it with regular solder. Okay, so the first thing we should do is practice using our wire cutters. So what you're going to do is you're going to find the midpoint on here for your inline fuses. And you're just going to clip. You just give it a good clip. So I actually had this thing set so it didn't clip out fully. Just set that all the way down. And then clip. See? Now you're wondering, well, how am I supposed to know what to set this at? What I do is I slowly play with this adjustment here. And then you'll see I uh, have a small hole. Compare that hole to how thick your wire is. So look for the shiny part in the center. And then you'll go. Now you're going to give yourself a really generous thing. And what I do is I kind of just twist it around and then I let go a little bit and then I pull. So I'm going to need to do it. I probably need to set this a little bit, uh, a little bit lower. No, that's probably too much. You really want to be careful with that part. See, we don't want to lose any strands in the wire. If we lose strands in the wire, it's bad. So like I said, I'm just going to give that a little bit of a thing, let go a little bit, and I'm trying to push up. And you'll see a pros do it, but this, again, guys, this is for beginners. I really don't want them. I really don't want people. Oh, got it. See, see all these strands here. We don't want to lose any of these strands. Now you're going to do the same thing with your brick. We're going to just cut it on the tail end, and I am going to pause it for a second. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I didn't wanna use a 124 connector, so I'm gonna use a 132 connector. So find the connector that has the tail piece, the connector piece to the control unit we need. Let me uh, uh, show that again. I mean, this is bare basic stuff here, I hope you know. <laughs> it doesn't even matter if you cut the wrong side. Uh, the wire that has this, we need this. So follow it up here. And you're going to cut it right at the end there, okay? Don't worry about messing anything up. Just cut it right at the end. Oh, super duper. Okay, take your X-Acto blade and kind of go in between the wires. Just split it. We want to just split it a bit. Now, we don't need to... There we go. We don't need to cut all the way down. We can just use our hands after we get the initial cut. Again, we'll need our wire strippers, which are apparently gone. And we're going to take our little adjustment tool. It's very important to be patient with this. 
because we don't, i serious, I, we don't want to lose any strands. That's obviously much too, uh, the head there is much too low. Just compare, see if you can see all the silver part inside. It's hard to show this on camera. I mean, you really can't see, even if I adjust the focus, it's not going to, you're not going to be able to see that. The point is, I can tell this is fine and give yourself a lot of room. Just a little, remember to let go of it. Oh, see, I messed up. See how there's some strands on the wrong, oh, maybe I didn't, let me see. Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, okay. I thought I lost some strands there, but it was just, uh, it's very important that you get the, uh, all the strands that you can. Perfect. Do the same for the other side. And since I know that I'm not going to overstrip it, oops. Oh, I lost a strand there. See, that's bad. I lost some, you see how, that's a perfect example. I did that on purpose. See how there's, Nothing here, like I, I went too far. That's why I say go slow. So we'll ignore this side, and I'm going to show you how to solder. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is start twisting the wire. Start from the bottom, make your way slowly to the top. Keep twisting. Perfect. And the inline fuse. Do the same thing. Okay. Now take. Here's the thing. We need to find the positive wire to connect. So this wire right here. So you can't just go from. Uh, let me get the brick. One second. You can't just go from uh, this connector here. You'll notice there's a... You'll notice there's a positive and negative on your connector. You cannot just follow this wire down because it might have gotten twisted in here. And it has happened to me. So how do we figure out which side is which, which side's positive? The smooth side is negative. And there's, see how there's like notches on this wire at the end here, on the side here? Yeah, see how this is notched and stuff? This side is smooth. So this is the negative wire. So the wire I messed up is a positive wire. So I'd have to... Uh, if I messed up the positive, I need to clip this and strip it down and do it right this time. But for the soldering part, I'll sh we'll show you um, how to solder. But the point is, is that the positive wire, the side that's all bumpy with the notches and stuff, will be the side you're going to tie this to. So let me uh, get started on that. All right. So how are we going to... First, like I said, I need to crimp this. If you don't think you have enough room, so we're going to make this into a loop. I think I'll start with going like this. And then we're going to... So I made this into like this kind of a hook. I'm going to hook this side up. And then... Just knot them together. Pull. All right. You see, I tied a knot on both sides. So you're trying to be looping, and again, you're tugging. All right, now one second. When we're dealing with solder and stuff, it's important to have proper ventilation. 
open a window, run a fan, do this outside is my recommendation, and also wear gloves so you're not touching the solder directly. You are responsible for anything that happens to you. I take no responsibility for beyond this point. This is purely educational. It's important to know what you're doing. Make sure to have your ventilation and your proper handwear. So I'm plugging my soldering iron all the way in. Make sure it's all the way in so you don't mess that up. You're going to see me take my solder. So I have thinner solder. This is not solder's too thin, but like I said, I can't really show you... Uh, show you how to do this with leaded. I'll show you how to use the solder in a second. So first we're going to heat up the area we plan to solder. I want to get these wires nice and hot. Make it easy for that solder to melt. If something's bothering you in your work area, please make sure to take care of it. Okay. So how I like to test if my uh, iron's hot enough or not is I'll just touch touch a solder with it and see how it's not melting or doing anything. It's not reacting because it's not hot enough. But I can see the smoke starting to come. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which it's slicing this. It's slicing my solder like butter now. So I'll put that away for a quick second. I take my flux. I'm gonna put flux on this area. And I'm just going to, now, you can just, what you'll do is you'll hold the flux underneath, I mean, sorry, you'll hold the solder underneath and kind of go on top if you really want to get things in, or you can just, uh, you know, do whatever. I'm just going to wrap this around because I don't got thick enough solder. I'm sure people are making fun of me right now, but the truth is, is that you tried doing this with lead-free solder. I'm just going to kind of cut underneath. Make sure to keep your hands away from this. Okay. See how I'm just slicing through this like nothing, nobody's business melting this? Oh, yeah. That's what you want to hear. So flux makes life a lot easier. Get it nice in the wires and everything. Perfect. Hey guys, I just want to point out that at sunday-slot-cars.square.site you can get digital sets like GT Faceoff over here. GT Faceoff comes with two lane changers and if you're an analog person trying to hook up this track with a variable power supply so you can adjust the supply and slow it down for people, this set here, like these digital sets, they can do it from the control unit individually. So you can still be at 100% with your car and have a child be at like 30 or 40% with their car so they don't fall off and slowly bring it up. So it's really good for new people and experienced people for digital sets because now you can simply uh, simply race. You can just do, everybody can be at their own skill level. You don't have to worry about, you know, setting somebody faster, somebody slower and doing all those minute adjustments. Now what I really like about this set here is it comes with two lane changers. So all you need to do is buy the app connect and some lube and you're good to go. You got your course complete. You can have multiple cars on it, up to six on the two lanes. Perfect way to go. Now I'm going to get back to the lesson. Hope you enjoyed it. Remember, Sunday dot dash slot dash cars dot square dot site. That's where you can buy a bunch of slot car products, help support the channel. Okay, see you soon. Okay. Now, I'm just going to tug at the knot. Looks good. Looks nice and covered. Okay, now an important thing to do is to, you need, so I'm probably putting in brackets, you need to clean this off. So I have a cleaning base and I just kind of wipe the tip around and I unplug it. Remember to unplug your iron when you're done. Very important you pay attention to that. So if I had to use a thicker if I was using thicker solder, that wouldn't have been a problem that I was having. So, you know, like I said, we, we have, I got you guys to be generous with your, uh, with your gap here. 
for that reason that you can uh, use a thicker solder. You don't need to put too much thought into it. If you got thinner solder like I did, just wrap it around like I did. Okay, now take your electrical tape and completely wrap it around the knot. So even on the outsides of it. There is shrink tubing you could use instead. But that's, uh, we're poor here, right? Like, this is a beginner video. I'm just going to use my exacto knife. You can tear it however you use your teeth or whatever savage thing you want to do. Again, I take no responsibility, and then you're done. Okay. Now, this is the fun part. Take your red positive wire. Unscrew the positive section of your, it should also even be color coded red, of your unit. And you're going to kind of wrap it around there nice and tight. As tight as you can. And then screw that in. Make sure it presses flat. We want a nice, solid connection. Take your black negative wire, unscrew this other section, repeat the same process. Make sure it's crimped nicely. Okay. Lastly, get a ground wire, attach it to the middle ground, plug, and put the bare wire have it touch the floor for the ground wire. Insert a 7.5 or 5 amp fuse into your inline fuse holder now. So you're going to want to have your amps set to about half. Uh, your voltage, first we'll turn this on. It'll take it a second. That's normal. Now your 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 voltage you can uh, adjust here. So uh, according to my, I mean I'm not going to show you which what, like how harsh the knobs are. It's going to vary depending on the model. Uh, I use it's 14.8 is what my adapt my transformer says for 132. Um, so you can adjust it to be a little bit higher if you need to. On my course, I actually have to go uh, 15.4. Now, it's important. We turn this on before we turn on the control unit. And likewise, when we're done, we're going to turn off the control unit first, then this. So, in other words, turn this on first. We're going to let it... It says to let it warm up for 10 minutes. Again, read your manual. I'll let this uh, warm up for 10 minutes. Okay, movie magic. It's done. So plug this in, turn that on, that's working, you can hear the fan going a bit, see the amps going. When I am done racing, I turn off my control unit, and then I turn off my power supply. Alright guys, I hope you found that informative. As always, you can support the site by buying stuff from me, you can go uh onto sunday slacker's facebook page and uh, if you're on your youtube or youtube and he either hit subscribe or like and follow pretty much just you know follow us on social media which is facebook and youtube and i'll catch you guys next time bye bye